I'm so deeply honored and grateful that you're joining me for A Fresh Approach to Painting, Gateway to the Inner Artist. A Fresh Approach to Painting, The Sky's the Limit, number one. We're painting a painting called Clear Skies, which is inspired by a painting called Feasting on Plums. This painting won a merit award from the mayor of Miami. So let's get started by beginning with the sky itself. I'm using a plain white canvas. I'm going to do the majority of the background of the sky with the light permanent blue. So let's pick up some of that color on our brush and make sure that's a damp brush. And just start placing that blue on the top part of our canvas. I'm loosely making marks on the canvas with my brush. My hand is at the bottom of the brush and I'm placing my color. I'm thinking about clouds while I'm painting this mainly identifying the areas, the background, the middle ground, and the foreground of this particular canvas. Using my solid light permanent blue and I'm quickly moving without thinking. I'm quickly moving over the whole top of my canvas. When I have enough blue on the canvas, I'm going to add in some white. And that white is going to automatically determine that there's a cloud in the sky. You notice I'm, I'm not being careful, I'm not drawing in a cloud. You want to have the impression of a cloud and by adding just a little bit of white to this blue, it's creating a mid-tone or a medium color cloud. It's different from what I originally started which was the solid color of the light permanent blue. So by blocking in the dark, darker part of the light permanent blue and adding a little bit of white to my brush, I simply am identifying that I want a cloud in this area. And I'm going to continue moving down the canvas until I reach the middle ground. Now the middle ground is where I pick up a little bit of my brilliant blue. I didn't have to clean my brush. Because this is all in the same color family. And I'm going to loosely place some of this brilliant blue identifying with that brilliant blue where my middle of my canvas is or my middle ground as we would call it. Now what's happening here is I have a sharp line between the brilliant blue and the light permanent blue. I don't want to have a sharp line anywhere on the canvas so I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white and I'm going to block out that sharpness. It's okay to have a little bit of marks going horizontal, but you don't want any harsh lines at this point because this painting is a very loose, misty kind of finished product. It's time now to determine where my sun or where my light is coming from before I get too far into the sky. So I've decided that I would like to have um, mm, the sun come in from this side. So that means I'm going to put in some little deeper color on the left side. I'm going to pick up my 
blue violet and gently block it in to some of to my open areas. Notice I'm blocking it in, being careful how I'm holding my brush, but I am blocking in that new color that we introduced. That's the blue violet. That's a sky or um, oh a sky blue, a dove blue, or many things we think about when we introduce a color like this. Okay, so you see how I have the deeper color coming in on this side of my sky. I know now that the right side is going to be lighter. I can clean my brush just slightly, but I don't have to clean it completely, leaving a little color on my brush and picking up my light permanent blue again. I'm going to further identify where I want this cloud. I don't want the cloud smack dab in the center of the painting. My, that cloud is going to end up being my focal point. So I want it slightly off center. That is just good practice when it comes to composition. All right, I am going to cover my whole canvas eventually, and I don't want to put too much paint on my canvas. I'm always looking, look at the side of the canvas. Do I see any globs? Yes, I do. I see some globs. Just by the sheer nature of how I applied that paint, I'm going to smooth over these globs. Not losing my strong marks that I need in an active sky. I'm going to add a little bit of white to my brush now. My brush is starting to dry out. So I add a little bit of white paint, a little bit of water. Still identifying where does my sky meet the middle of my painting. Adding a little more white. By loosely holding my brush, I'm getting some nice, strong marks. And you need that when you paint a sky. And keep moving around your painting. Don't get stuck in a corner because that's what's going to force you to start drawing. And we, are not, we don't do any drawing in our classes. All right, I'm adding a little white because that blue has dried to a point where I can add some white. I don't want to get too crazy with my cloud because I have not completed my background yet. I come down into my middle ground. I'm going to get rid of those harsh lines that I had a few left from the, my first application of the Brilliant Blue. Notice I'm leaving the center of my painting open until I can determine just exactly where my horizon line is. So I'm going to skip down now to the bottom of my painting. Pick up my Ultramarine Blue and I'm going to start loosely adding it to the bottom of my canvas. These are smooth horizontal strokes. I'm not drawing it in. Matter of fact, I'm just pulling my hand all the way across the canvas. Not enough paint on my brush. That's why it started drippy, but dripping is okay to a degree. I want this blue to be uneven. I'm going to pick up some of my hooker green and alizarin crimson because that's how I make a dark color. Add it to my ultramarine and I'm going to just put this at the very, very bottom of my canvas. That's where my darkest, deepest blue is.
While we're in the foreground, I'm going to introduce another color, and that is thalo blue. Add a little thalo blue with my hooker green and alizarin crimson, and I'm just going to pull that color right across the bottom. That's going to give me dark, dark blue water, and that dark blue water is all the way in the foreground. That's our deepest water. Now, if you need to, you can flip your painting upside down. I'm just going to do it so I can finish the bottom of my canvas. It's at this time that I add some paint to the edge of my canvas. And the reason I do that, it gives me more of a complete visual when I'm straight on. So I'm just going to paint over the top of the canvas. Of course, this is when you get the paint all over your hands. So wearing an apron might be important to you. I'm going to continue to work on my clouds in the sky. And that is by adding a little white and blue violet. Make sure my brush is nice and wet. And I'm going to tap in the bottom of this cloud. This is the cloud that I identified earlier as the focal point of my canvas. I need to let that dry. Uh, so I'm going to add a little portrait pink to my blue. Use my mixing area in my palette. Most of the time, you know, we we mix on the directly on the canvas, but when we're making this shadow out of the portrait pink and the blue violet, we can do it on the palette. And I'm going to take and pull a little of this blue across my light permanent blue. And that is above the middle ground. This blue goes right above the middle ground, which is above the blue violet. It's going to pull some color across the bottom of where the clouds are, but above the horizon line. And that looks pretty good. All right. While that's drying, I'm going to put in a little bit of my, the top of my cloud. I'm using, still using this wash brush, and I'm going to just tap in where the top of my cloud is. This is how you work with acrylic. You, you can, it's very different than working with other types of paint because it dries so rapidly. Creating a cloud is a process. It's a process of layers. So I'm adding white now to the top of my cloud. I'm not rubbing it in. I'm not doing a circular motion. I'm using the edge of this very soft brush called a wash brush. And this is giving me some beautiful clouds. And that contrasts with that dark, what light permanent blue now becomes a dark color. There we go. I touch my canvas in other areas with what's left on my white brush, on my wash brush. One being frugal and the other using up the paint on my brush. Okay, that is starting to look like a beautiful, happy cloud. I put the dark blue on the bottom because a cloud has a bottom and a top. It's lighter on the top, medium in the middle part of the cloud, and a little darker on the very base of the cloud. That is the exact premise of the whole entire painting. If you notice, we have light permanent blue across the top. We have a little shadow 
in the middle ground of the painting with our blue permanent, bright blue permanent color. Before I get too far along, I'm going to identify where my horizon line is. And I see that I've left the white in the center of the painting. So I'm going to take just a touch of Naples yellow and white on the brush. Remember, I'm scooping up the color. I'm not mixing it. I'm just scooping up a little bit of color. And I'm going to tap over my white area, the top of my white area. And that is now, I've now decided that that is where the sky is going to meet the water. That's just below my bright blue middle ground of the canvas. Make sure now I really clean my brush. Because I'm going to go back into the sky. I see that some natural color has caused some light and dark areas of my sky. I certainly don't want to paint that out. I want to use that magic that happened by applying the paint. So if you see right here where the, my dark area is and it then graduates into this light area, I'm going to put some white on my brush and a little of my light permanent and I'm just going to touch now that's a little too white, so I'm going to add some more light permanent blue to my brush because I'm going to accent this natural area that was created by applying the paint. This is an or organic sky. Magic happens organically when we create these sky's the limit paintings. Now right now I'm using a bra wash brush, but in future paintings we're going to use all different types of utensils or tools from sponges to, um, well, different types of sponges to create skies. But today we're just going to use mainly this wash brush and that wash brush is going to complete almost the entire sky. Now see where that natural transition was? And it looked like there was a blob there of a different color. It's, it wasn't. It was perfect because now I have a natural transition in my sky. I'm going to work with these natural transitions. Here's another one over on this side. Let me just show you again how to do that. Just take a little bit of the light permanent blue and tap over that transition and then smooth it out slightly. Not removing your natural marks that you've made in your sky and you just have to trust and have faith that when this dries it's going to be a magnificent sky using this technique. It always is. So there we have it. That sky is coming along beautifully and I don't have any rough transitions in it anymore. We identified early on where the light is coming from. So our light is coming from the right side. We've added some violet blue to give us some dark areas on the left side. That's just to keep our focus while we're painting the painting. Also, refer to your notan. Your notan will tell you exactly where the light areas are and the dark areas. So I'm going to go ahead now and put some white and brilliant blue from our middle ground onto my paintbrush. I'm going to identify an S shape in my painting. And that S shape will be where the light is hitting the water. And this is why I left the white in the foreground of my painting. I've got a white area that starts here, goes all the way across, and then comes back this way. I don't want to cover up those areas with my brilliant blue. So I'm just going to add a little bit of color, further defining 
my S. I'm going to add some white to my brush. I had some white on my brush there, which was good. It just naturally happened. I'm lucky that way. All right, so here we go. This is my S. It starts here, and then it's going to zigzag back and then end up in this foreground. So now it's okay for me, now that I know where my S is, now it's okay for me to fill in that area that I had left blank. All right, keep my hand moving this way and back. So this goes like that. I'm going to cover over a little bit of this brilliant blue now. There. Now see how my water is starting to form itself. Okay, I added some shadow to the top of my painting underneath my clouds and also in this area right above my middle ground. I'm going to take some blue violet and add it to the bottom of my painting. I did not put any in yet, but what you do to one part of your painting, you should always at least touch that color in the other part of the painting. So I'm putting a little bit of this blue. I mixed this blue-violet with the pink, portrait pink, to get my gray underbelly of my cloud. I'm taking that same blue and adding it to my water, only in a solid color, not mixed with the portrait pink. The reason I'm doing that is the color is more brilliant in the foreground. The part that's the closest to you needs to be brighter and more vivid and more distinct. The clouds are in the background, so that's why I added the portrait pink to the blue to get a little duller color. Not so pronounced. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with my S. I've got to add a little more. As this dries, I can keep adding just a little, little touches of paint. And by using a horizontal motion, I'm naturally creating water and then layering it over all the colors. I'm giving my painting some interest. I'm going to pull some of this white forward so that I can have the front part of my S. Oops, I had a little too much. I'm going to wipe it off with my paper towel. You don't see me do that too often. Okay, now now that I've put my white in and it's still slightly wet, I'm going to take a dry brush. Matter of fact, I'm just going to switch brushes. And I'm going to pull the paint down. By pulling this white down that's still slightly wet, I am creating shadows. I'm going to go all the way across my whole painting with a dry brush in the foreground. And just keep pulling this down. Step back, look at the painting before you do the whole area. But this is a natural easy way to create shadow. Okay, now, now that I've done this enough with a dry brush. I'm going to wet it up slightly and I'm going to pull down into the dark blue. Be careful how you do this. You won't want to get too many streaks. Do it a little at a time and then pull your brush across. 
So vertical marks and then pull your brush across so that it's not the marks are not so vivid. You can always add to this. Just do a little at a time until you feel comfortable with this technique. There, that's the water. Now I'm going to switch brushes back and work on my sky. Now it's time to add a little more white to my brush and my cloud. Now I'm going to actually form my cloud, add a little more to the top of it. I'm determining on now what size I want my cloud to be. Do I want it to be a large rain cloud? Or do I want it to just be a subtle cloud in the sky? Still using this wash brush, dragging color across the sky. And then I'm going back and smoothing out my rough edges. Okay, and taking it all the way to the side of the canvas. I'm taking it off the canvas. Watch, watch your hand movements. Don't get too detailed. Don't press too hard. Keep it loose. And you see how your sky is taking on even more interest. I'm just, I have a little paint left on my brush, so I'm going to add a little water. Have fun with this. Make, make this an enjoyable experience because you're creating a unique cloud. No two clouds, well, no two clouds come out the same and no two skies come out the same. Every time you paint this painting, it will look completely different. That's the fun part of being creative. Okay, you notice I'm, the way I'm moving my brush just smoothing out some of those rough areas underneath the cloud. So I'm liking that. I've decided that my cloud is going to dribble a little bit of rain today. So I am going to put some white on my brush. Add a little more white to the bottom of my cloud. Now that's not the complete bottom where I have my blue shadow. It's the left side of the bottom of my cloud. And by smoothing that out, it's just blending the color in. It's not a harsh white. Okay, now I am going to take my dry brush and I'm going to pull down Put a little paint on my brush and I'm just going to pull down right through my sky in one small area. Not too much. Don't worry if you put too much on. You can always take your Brilliant Blue and blot it out. But This is just a little bit of rain coming out of the bottom of my cloud. I'm going to let that dry because it will look totally different when it's completely dry. And that's when I determine, did I put enough rain or do I need to add some more? For some added interest, I'm going to go ahead and get some white on my brush, a little Naples yellow, and I'm going to add a little of this color right under, under my cloud. Not attached to my cloud, but just under my cloud. That is so subtle you don't see it now but when this painting is completely dry it's going to add some pop to your white cloud okay down at the bottom what we want to do in the foreground is pick up a little bit of lizard and crimson and we're going to add just some hints of that reddish color to our water right in the blue, but right under where our white S comes to the front of the painting. 
It's these subtle changes that add interest to your painting and create an exciting composition. So here we have the actual painting called Feasting on Plums that won the Special Merit Award by the Mayor of Miami. And we've been painting a, a painting similar to this. They all come out slightly different. Let's focus on the three areas of this painting. We have the background in the light permanent blue. We have the middle ground where the horizon line is. And we have this front foreground area, mainly with the light shining down on the water. Oh, we have to look at the cloud. You have an underpainting of the cloud. You have the white, bright white part of the cloud on top. In the middle ground, you use Naples yellow just to draw a subtle attention to the horizon line. And the rain is raining down through that horizon line onto the front of the painting. This is actually bringing the viewer into the painting and it's also directing the viewer's eye from the top of the painting from the background into the foreground. That S adds a little more interest to your painting.